All right, so in 4.9, first thing I want us to do is we're going to be thinking of these um, systems, and we're going to focus for right now on linear systems. We're going to solve them using a technique called elimination. We're going to eliminate one of the variables in a two-by-two two system and thus turn it into a equation in one variable. Once it's an equation in one variable, it may have multiple derivatives, so maybe a higher order derivative, but we'll solve it like we did the rest of chapter four. So we'll use the homogeneous and the particular solution. We may have to use method of undetermined, undetermined coefficients. We may have to use variation of parameters. So those become like the last step of this process. So recall the operator notation for the derivative. That is, when we write dy, we mean the same thing as uh, y prime or dy dt. I want us to use this notation right there. Okay? And like d squared, then y is the same thing as y double prime or d squared y dt squared. So I'm going to use this notation because it becomes the easiest form to accomplish this elimination. So in other words, if I gave you a system that looked like this, x double prime plus 2x prime minus x plus y double prime minus 3y equals the sine of t and x prime minus 4x plus y prime minus 2y equals e to the minus t. Uh, I'm broke. Yeah, I'll broadcast. Okay, so let's write as So let's do that written in operator notation. Now if you did it directly, you get the, like a d squared x plus 2dx minus x plus d squared y minus 3y equals sine of t and dx minus 4x plus dy minus 2y equals e to the minus t. But I'm going to take one further step, and I'm going to write it in by basically factoring out the x. I'm going to write this as d squared plus 2d minus 1x plus d squared minus 3. And I say times, it's not really times, it's applied to y. And I write this as d minus 4 applied to x plus d minus 2 applied to y equals e to the minus t. Now you've got to kind of reshape your brain a little bit of how you're thinking about this. Remember, I'm not taking a variable d and multiplying it times x. Times x. Anytime I see a d next to an x, I mean take the derivative of the x function. If I see a d squared, it means take the second derivative. So if I see d squared plus 2d minus 1 times x, I don't really mean times. I mean this means to take the second derivative of x plus 2 times the first derivative minus x. Whatever the function x is of t, that's the operator you're applying to it. Now, interestingly, I don't know if we really talked about this, but let me come off, off to the side over here and just mention that if I had something like d squared, let's say I had minus 2d plus 1 
applied to x. Because of the linear properties of d, you can actually factor differential operators and write that as d minus 1 times d minus 1. And these two things give you the same result. In other words, let's say, for example, x is sine of t. Okay? Second derivative minus 2 times the first derivative plus 1 of this function. Okay, first of all, the second derivative of sine is negative sine, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do d squared minus 2d plus 1 of sine, so of x. That's a negative sine of t. And then the derivative of sine is cosine, so minus 2 cosine of t plus sine of t, right? Okay, so those cancel, and so I get what? Negative 2 cosine t. Sorry, I'm writing so small over here, but this is uh, off-the-cuff extra information. But it's going to be useful when we finish this after spring break. Now, my point here is, what if I did it this way? What if I did it in order from right to left? First thing I do is the derivative minus the function get the result from that, and then take the derivative of that minus itself. Ooh. Right? So what is d minus 1 of sine of t? That is cosine of t minus sine of t, right? Mm -hmm. Now what's d minus 1 of cosine of t minus sine of t? I would bet. It's going to turn out to be this, right? So take the derivative of cosine minus sine. That is negative sine of t minus cosine of t, right? Minus itself, minus cosine of t minus sine of t. All right? Derivative of it minus itself. The signs cancel and you get minus 2 cosine t. Surprise, surprise. So you can perform algebra, FOIL, and factoring with differential operators, just like you do with variables representing real numbers. Isn't that cool? Novel? <laughs> Swell. So then, when we do things like elimination... In um, two by two systems, you're typically multiplying one equation by something and another equation by something so that when you add them up, you cancel out one of the variables. Okay? Well, what we are going to do is we're going to think linear addition, but we're going to use it to reduce a differential equation system to one variable. All right, simple case. dx dt equals 3y, and dy dt equals 2x. Rewrite in differential or with differential operator form. What does that look like? First, it would, on the left would be dx, dx equals 3y. And then dy equals 2x. dy equals 2x. Which I'm going to take one step further, and I'm going to write this as dx minus 3y equals 0, and d, I'm sorry, 2x 
negative, or I don't know, minus dy, I don't care, equals zero. Is that okay? I lined up my x's, I lined up my y's. But this system here is just the equivalent of this system. You could also have done minus 2 plus, it doesn't matter. I don't care what we do there. Now, how could we eliminate a variable? Let's say I wanted to eliminate the y's. What could I quote-unquote multiply the first equation by and quote-unquote multiply the second equation by so that when I add them together, the y terms cancel out? Multiply by d on the first, right? And then multiply by 3 on the second. So really what I'm doing is I'm applying an operator to the first equation. I'm applying the differential operator on both sides. Which, if a function equals a function, then the derivative of the function equals the derivative of the function. So I'm perfectly okay doing that and keeping the, the solution to this system consistent. Okay? On the second one, I'm going to apply an operator, but the operator I'm applying is to multiply it by 3. So I'm essentially multiplying by 3. So we're going to apply d to equation 1 and multiply by 3 on equation 2. Which gives me what? d squared x minus 3 dy equals 0 and a negative 6x plus 3 dy equals 0. Then add. Okay, d squared x minus 6 is d squared minus 6x is done equals 0. Now what's d squared minus 6? Applied to x. Notice that's x double prime minus 6x equals zero. So zero. I mean six x. No. It's a differential equation. Second order linear with constant coefficients. Like so an AY double prime plus BY okay. prime plus CY. So we find the uh, coefficient right here? Like you have squared? Yep, exactly. Use the characteristic polynomial, find your C1 e to the something power plus C2 e to the second something power and so on. Okay? Now, I'm out of time, so I'm going to stop there. But we'll then have solved for x in terms of a C1 and C2. We're going to have to come back and figure out a way to solve for y. We could do the same thing again to eliminate the x and figure out the y equation. Or we can plug the x equation back into one of these and then solve the resulting differential equation from that. But that's where it makes, it's just, it's now just linear elimination to end up with a higher order system that we can now solve. That's it. We'll keep going from there. So no homework. I'm sorry. Woo.